The Wall of Nanjing, which was built in the Ming Dynasty, is the longest surviving city wall in China and the grandest of its kind in the world. This particular section of the wall underneath my feet is its oldest section, built over 1,700 years ago. Over the course of more than a thousand years, there were ten dynasties that established their capitals here in Nanjing. Strolling along the wall, I have in my view the scenic splendor of the entire city. This ancient capital of ten dynasties, this famous Buddhist pilgrimage site where ancient temples can be found all around, this place of congregation for talents on China's political stage, where countless great figures in history have left their mark. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about the oldest university in the city of Nanjing. This is the Museum of Nanjing University. Erected in 1902, the building was once the university library and now holds the oldest secrets of the university. This is a memorial to the throne composed in 1902. A memorial to the throne is a work report submitted to the emperor by court officials in the olden days. The author of this memorial was Zhang Zhidong, an important statesman in late Qing dynasty. At that time, the Qing government was harried by troubles both at home and abroad and was on the verge of collapse. Zhang Zhidong proposed to the emperor that a normal school be set up for the purpose of strengthening and saving China through introducing and absorbing Western sciences, culture, and education. A normal college was thus established, which was considered the birthplace of modern education and has evolved into today's Nanjing University. This was San Jiang Normal College. Zhang Zhidong was a key figure in guiding the ancient city of Nanjing into modernity and San Jiang Normal College one of the fountainheads. At its different historical stages, Nanjing University changed its name a number of times, from San Jiang Normal College to National Central University. However, its school ethos remains unaltered. The greatest of Chinese scholars were once gathered here, making it the best and largest university in Asia. Another fountainhead for Nanjing University was the University of Nanking, or Jinling Dashui in Chinese. In 1888, John Calvin Ferguson, a Canadian missionary, founded the Nanking University, or Huiwen Shuyuan in Chinese, in Nanjing, which offered courses on the Bible, English, mathematics, and other disciplines. Afterwards, the Nanking University was merged with two other Christian schools into the University of Nanking. In 1952, it was merged with Nanjing University. This was the chapel of Nanking University. The clear and vibrant stroke of the bell traveled through a hundred years. Into this historic university, generations of students have come to pursue their dreams. In 1915, a group of young Chinese students studying in the United States founded China's earliest modern academic society for science, the Science Society of China. The Science Society of China kindled the flame of natural science study in China. The torch of science was borne by different scientists in different periods of history and passed down from generation to generation. In the 1920s, the Western science and culture had tremendous influence over China. A group of professors at Nanjing University, however, proposed to make the quintessence of Chinese classical culture thrive while absorbing new knowledge, emphasizing the importance of preserving and passing on the Chinese culture. This laid a solid foundation for the development of the discipline of Chinese language and literature at Nanjing University. For over 100 years, great masters have gathered here at the School of Liberal Arts, one of the schools with the longest history and greatest academic legacies at Nanjing University. 
Nanjing University is also the birthplace of film studies in China. These are film recordings showing the campus life of faculty and students of the University of Nanking. There are also film recordings of a number of social scenes at the time. They are valuable and vivid documentations of a bygone age. Sun Ming Jing was the founder of film studies in China's higher learning institutions, and Nanjing University was the first to set up a department of film studies in China's higher education system. Indeed, the involvement of Nanjing University is inextricably intertwined with the fate of contemporary China. In 1960, here on the second floor of this building, in this room, Cheng Kaijiang, a professor of physics at Nanjing University, received an order from Beijing. He was to take charge of a program for aeronautics and astronautics, as well as man-made satellite for the young republic. Having studied under the supervision of the great physicist, Professor Max Born, Cheng Kaijiao became a fellow at the Royal Institute of Chemistry in the UK by the age of 30. This excellent physicist answered the call of his country and walked into the vast Gobi Desert, in whose harsh wilderness he then stayed for 20 years. The fight for truth, to concern oneself with the rise and fall of the nation, this is the tradition of the Chinese intelligentsia. In 1978, Deng Xiaoping was planning to introduce a wave of reform and opening up in China. Before that, however, it was a top priority that the nation cast off its ideological shackles. In May that year, the Guangming Daily published an article entitled, Practice is the Sole Criterion for Truth, which received attention and commendation from Deng Xiaoping and thus set off a national-wide discussion. The author of this article is Hu Fuming, who, though at the time, was only a young lecturer at Nanjing University, started an ideological emancipation campaign rare in the history of the Chinese nation. Nanjing University has always been open to the world. As early as the beginning of last century, the university had professors from the United States, Japan, and other countries. This house was once the home of Professor John Lessing Buck and his wife Pearl S. Buck. Professor Buck founded the discipline of agricultural economics in China and was the first head of the Department of Agricultural Economics at the University of Nanking. The Bucks frequently went into the Chinese countryside for field research, which inspired Pearl S. Buck to write her great novel, The Good Earth. The novel won the 1932 Pulitzer Prize for Literature, and six years later, the second Nobel Prize for Literature in U.S. history. In October 1998, former U.S. President George Bush visited Nanjing University and accepted an honorary doctorate from the university. As he went around the former residence of Pearl S. Buck, he mentioned that like millions of Americans, his knowledge of and yearning for China began with Pearl Buck's novels. In the early winter of 1937, in the same house, the faculty of the University of Nanking, out of a sense of justice and humanitarianism, set up the International Committee for the Nanking Safety Zone. During the Japanese occupation of Nanjing, the Nanking Safety Zone protected the lives of more than 250,000 civilians. We will bear forever in mind the names of these guardians of peace. Minor Cyril Bates, Charles Riggs, Robert O. Wilson, Louis S.C. Smythe, John Maggie, and John Robb. This is the Johns Hopkins University, Nanjing University Center for Chinese and American Studies. The earliest window of correspondence and collaboration between New China and a Western University. Over the course of 30 years, more than 3,000 graduates set off from here for all parts of the world. The Hopkins Nanjing Center has become the cradle for young Chinese and American leaders, paving the way for China's international cooperation. Nanjing University is also one of the first universities to adapt to international evaluation indexes, steadily moving up in them and becoming one of the most active Chinese universities 
in terms of international exchange. Nanjing University is a member of the C9 League, an alliance of nine elite universities in China. In 2006, Nanjing University won the first prize of the National Natural Science Award, which is the first time for mainland Chinese universities. 16 disciplines rank top 1% worldwide in 2016 ESI rankings, while chemistry enters the 1% ranking. In 2016, the Nature Index data shows Nanjing University ranks the second among all the universities and institutions in China, the 20th among the global universities and institutions, the 25th among the worldwide research institutions, and the fourth among the research institutions in the Asia-Pacific region. Nanjing University has ongoing student exchange programs with a great number of top universities in the world. More and more overseas students and scholars are choosing Nanjing University to further their education and research. There are comfortable and safe international student apartments and convenient transportation options. There are first-class libraries and gymnasiums as well as modern teaching facilities. There are also a variety of leisure and social activities with more than 100 student clubs and societies to meet student interests. Various recreational and sports activities, visits and tours make Nanjing University the best choice for foreign students to learn and experience China. By being in an environment where I have a more intimate relationship with Chinese people, language and economy, I am now able to transcend not only linguistic but cultural barriers. Uh, my name is Kenneth Jarrett. I'm currently the president of the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai. So in terms of the center's contribution to that, I would say it gave me you know, a fresh or special perspective on China. You know, both the chance to get to know Chinese young people, and then you're seeing China not from the perspective of a government official, because at the center, you know, I was just a student. Well, when I was acquainted with Nanjing University, I was amazed by the beauty of the campus. Uh, the old campus and the new campus both are very beautiful. They are beautiful because they are full of trees, and I see the, uh, the, uh, the leaves turn uh, red and yellow. And so this, for me, is one of the amazing beauties of, of this university. Nanjing University. This hundred-year-old university of great repute has a broad vision, rich history, innovative vitality, and youthful passion. Immanuel Kant said two things fill the mind with ever new, increasing admiration and awe. The starry sky above me and the moral law within me. For more than a hundred years, Nanjing University has been regarded as having the most liberated ideas, the most independent spirit, and the purest scholarship. It has been presenting its own interpretations of the concept of university spirit and propping up a glittering stretch of the starry heaven of scholarship.